Hey guys and gals, give yourself a round of applause. You've all been so incredibly amazing and truly awesome. You've helped successfully push me past 3,000 plus subscribers on my channel. Thanks to your kindness, generosity, and utter sincerity. Thank you all so much for tuning in, liking, subscribing, and commenting. I absolutely love checking out your comments on a normal basis. But in any case, here lies within the sleeping princess. However, are we to reawaken her? Why we will enlist the aid of our trusty and noble steed, our tax. No, not really our tax, but it might as well be as far as I'm concerned. The never-ending story scenario in the land of Fantasia, because invariably the follow of spiritual successor to this game, the last guardian might as well have Falcor as the co-patriot to the main protagonist. And look at this breathtakingly bold and unequivocal a masterpiece of a game on PlayStation 4 called Shadow of the Colossus. I mean, this is a far cry from the original PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 remaster because the initial issues as far as frame rate, uh, sluggish appearance, draw and distance, pop-up issues are nowhere to be seen in this tremendously amazing, breathtakingly bold and beautiful game here, I mean. And speaking of brotherhood, my lifelong friend of 30 plus years, Rich, is now playing the first of 16 Colossi because I absolutely suck at this game. This has been in my backlog for many, many years, but I am more into the quintessential and visceral combat games such as Devil May Cry, and of course Bayonetta, and of course finally Ninja Gaiden, whereas he is more into the meditative experience games such as Luminous, and of course Shadow of the Colossus. I mean, this is a truly surreal experience where you can go throughout your environment, pretending it is Fantasia, and take it at your own leisurely pace and take in the scenery. I mean, it is truly breathtakingly bold and beautiful, and I can't say that enough. And look at this backdrop here. That is just mind-blowing. It reminds me of the very first time that I played Assassin's Creed on PlayStation 4. I'm talking about Black Flag, and I went to the highest altitude, and I looked into the horizon. I was able to see the sunset. I love that there is no popping or drawing distance, much akin to the games on uh, Nintendo 64 where Fog was in your face, such as in Castlevania 64. And, of course, on PlayStation 2, Shadow of the Colossus had pop-ups out of the wazoo. I mean, you see rock formations just magically appear out of thin air like a magician threw them into the mix. But this is a puzzle-based boss uh, game. And there are, again, uh, 16 Colossi in the game. And we're going to be doing an incredibly cool gimmick today. We're going to be otherwise vanquishing, incinerating, murder, death, killing, uh, taking out, tarnishing the reputation, and otherwise redeeming unnecessary many multitude of enemies across a variety of platforms and many, many different games. We're going to get up to a body count of 3,000 plus kills today. But check out this uh, reminiscence mode right here. Very, very cool. And I have to say, I'm not a tremendous fan of classical music, but the soundtrack and score to this is so cool that I would absolutely listen to this by itself. I mean, typically, I'd almost need a mixture, kind of a mashup of Pavarotti and Semitura. If you've ever heard that mashup, I absolutely love that uh, classical-inspired uh, operatic feel to it with a little bit of a tint of Semitura awesomeness there. And of course, uh, even came out the M has a little bit of a uh, classical-inspired music mixed in like the DIY song. Very, very cool stuff, but uh, spoiler alert, you're gonna learn how to take on the first Colossi today, but uh, of course, uh, not a huge deal. Many of you should be able to see this from the get-go. The leg right here. There are various weak points on these uh, bosses, and I'm kind of wondering how the hell did platforms get on this boss? I mean, this is kind of an oversight here. Who in their right mind even put these uh, platforms on the boss? But again, listen to this incredible score, and again, I give personal appreciation and thanks to my lifelong brother, Rich, for taking on this Colossus today, because I suck at this game. I would have probably lost my grip and fell off this uh, boss a multitude of times. But luckily, in the PlayStation 4 reboot of the game, they fixed the controls, because even in the PlayStation 3 version, the controls were still confoundedly atrocious and terrible and troublesome and cumbersome. I mean, I did not at all like them at all, but here they fixed them up, and the game is far more manageable. But look at this beautiful game. It even reminds me of a rock monster from Fantasia. I almost feel pity taking out one of the rock monsters because that was such a cool character. And again, I'm a big fan of Never Ending Story from the Le Mans song Never Ending Story to, of course, the comic books, the movies, the cartoon series, and the non-console video games. But okay, guys and gals, one down, 2,999 to go! douche. And thanks again, Rich. You're incredibly awesome. And uh, 
maybe these guys and gals will check out this game and see what is unequivocally, unequivocally one of the best games ever made. One of the quintessential experiences on PlayStation 4, without a doubt, worth checking out. Great, great steel scene there, and we're going to move on to the mini classic and check out some more May 2003 Plus, and of course, Horse Travaganza and other cool gimmicks today. Okay, next to the lineup is a game that is truly befitted of the moniker of 3000, an incredibly cool and amazingly awesome racing game, Top Gear 3000, at full speed ahead without a nary a hint of graphical glitches. I previously ran this on BSNES at 10 frames per second, I am now running this here now on SNES Linux Bright without graphical glitches, full speed ahead. I give personal tremendous thanks and appreciation to the original code in the Bayou on PC, and this culminated in the efforts and collaboration of myself, Mad Monkey, and KPS51 as far as getting this on the mini classics. And what I love more than shmups and racing games in general is the ability to upgrade your vehicles and ships inside the shmups and racing games. Right here, I'm gonna go to race, and I'm able to amass credits and upgrade my engine, my tires, my gearbox, armor boost, and such in between races. I mean, upgrade ability in any game definitely adds to the mix as far as addictability is concerned. But let's get the show on the road and try to take out 18 to 19 opponents here and take out this target destination of 3,000 opponents to vanquish today. Not off to the best start here, but I'll see what I can do and go with the flow here. And there are typically, uh, for those of you who are formerly acquainted with AI in racing games, there are typically two types that you would typically uh, encounter. You would have a game such as Gran Turismo 4, where you'd have predestined pass, and once you upgrade your vehicles, them enemies are much easier to take on because they follow the same set path and destination at the same speed as always. Then of course you have games such as Need for Speed, where you typically have rubber band AI, where no matter how well you do, you can be way ahead of the pack, make one little mishap or mistake, or uh, agreements at the tail end of a race and be taken out immediately. This game is pretty much one of those type of games where once you upgrade your car, you can pretty much uh, take on the pack and have not a hint of rubber band AI. I love this game. But very, very cool stuff here. And I'd have to say Need for Speed Most Wanted. The 360 PC version is one of my absolute favorites. I love the one that was rem uh, remade as well with the same title. Completely different game. And I love the re-inflatable tires. It's a really, really cool uh, gimmick as far as the power-up is concerned. Let's see if I can pull off first base here. And I have uh, two clickers that I'm going to be trying to kind of keep a guessment as far as the opponents I'm taking on today. Uh, this is going to bring me up to 20 count if I get first place here. And I'm not playing on easy mode, I'm just playing on standard difficulty here. And I uh, lapped a few opponents already. So first place, and now I'm actually able to use my money and upgrade my vehicle and such. Very, very cool stuff here. And there are a number of arcade games that have a hand, basically the upgrade ability aspect to them. And I'm going to go over a couple of these today. But uh, yeah, once you amass your credits here, I would recommend using your suspense states. And then uh, pretty much acquire an upgraded vehicle specs and such. And this is a really, really cool game. Definitely worth digging a few hours at a time into. But uh, I highly recommend it. We're going to move on to some more games today. We got 20 opponents out of the way. We only have 2,000, <laughs> close to 2,980 left to go. And uh, we played uh, Shadow of the Colossus where we had a damsel in distress that we had to rescue. What if we did it the opposite way around and we had uh, the female rescuing the male for once? And I'm going to do this right now with the arcade version, a great, great hack called Donkey Kong Pauline Edition. And this pretty much originated with a girl asking her father why females cannot rescue the males. And uh, he did a bit of a hack here and it turned into the Donkey Kong Pauline edition. Very, very cool stuff here. And not only that, there's a kind of a glitch where if you, uh, I'm going to show you this right now once I start the game. This is another cool thing you're going to be able to do with Main 2003 Plus that you're going to very much thoroughly appreciate. And this does require samples if you want to hear Donkey Kong humping up and down, but you're going to notice that, uh, Pauline is rescuing Donkey Kong. If you hold up and right, diagonal, I can't move at all. But if you go into the uh, quick menu, core options here. And this is a feature that is applicable to MAME 2003 Plus, which is incredibly awesome. You can go into four-way joystick emulation, and it makes it much easier and more intuitive. And it affects a lot of games like this. But see if I can get the 21 opponents with Donkey Kong here. And I'm not the best at this game. This is an incredibly difficult game. 
Don't come down. Ah! Okay, second time's the charm here. Come on, Pauline, you can do it. Help Mario. And there are some really, really cool Donkey Kong uh, hacks. I mean, these are very, very awesome. And this hack is nice because uh, it actually contains levels that were omitted from the Donkey Kong uh, classics on the original Nintendo version. But let's try to take out Donkey Kong and get 21 enemies there, hopefully. Oh, great, don't come down. I can do this. Please don't. Oh well. Almost. And I actually like the Game & Watch versions of this as well. They're both cool. Okay, come on. Let's do this. 21 down. We're going to move on to some more cool... Uh, there's another great, great Donkey Kong hack we're going to try next. Again, I'm running roughly 200 games in my main home menu, so if I get a C8 error, which could happen with the setup, I'm just going to simply get right back into frame action. We're going to be doing Donkey Kong 2 Jumpman Returns, and this is an arduous, incredibly difficult, frustrating game, but cool nonetheless. And I'm not typically big into hacks, but uh, some of the hacks I'm showcasing today are very cool hacks. This is a tough game, without a doubt. Okay. And I'm not sure I'm going to be able to take Donkey Kong down, but I'm at least showcasing this hack. We got quite a few more games to do today, and I'm going to try to get ever closer to that 3,000 target. Hopefully I'll be able to pull it off. And I do love the Donkey Kong on Game Boy as well, which is actually a, a nice surprise because it actually, once you bypass the first level, it changes it up with an entirely different type of game scheme. And I'm probably going to get my butt kick here because this is not that easy of a game. <laughs> See, I already screwed up. I'll try one more life here. But definitely, definitely cool if you're a big Donkey Kong fanatic. And uh, we're going to do that uh, eight-way directional again in options. Four-way uh, joystick emulation and eight-way joystick. Okay. Oh, great. Third time's the charm. I hit one of them uh, moving platforms above. Again, you're going to need the samples. You can use the samples HMOD. Otherwise, you're not going to hear Mario or Donkey Kong appropriately. I have a feeling I'm going to fail a third time here, but I at least want to showcase this uh, little cool hack here. It is a tough game. I already got my butt kicked, but we're going to move on to a couple more hacks here. I'm definitely going to have to come back and practice because I suck at this hack right here. I'm a little bit better at Pauline. And there are a couple other great games, but we're going to get back to them. I'm going to talk about games that you can level up in. Uh, we're going to do this great game called uh, King of Dragons. Great, incredibly cool game with a level up gimmick. Kind of like the racing level up aspect of, of course, Top Gear 3000. And we need to get closer to that 3000 limit here. Let's see what kind of characters we can select as here. And I'm going to be running most of these on MAME 2003 Plus today. Let's see what kind of characters we have. Uh, we could be an elf. I'll play as the elf. Why not? I always love the thief, elf, archers, and such in most games. And yes, you do level up in the course of this game. Oh, we got to at least take out 100 enemies here. Okay. This is a great uh, three-player mode activate game as well. Definitely a great pick-me-up, quick-and-play game here. And that's the beauty of arcade games. No matter uh, how much free time you do not have, you can nearly always get 5 to 10 to 15 minutes of gameplay in your day in an arcade game. Many of these you can beat in a very short amount of time. I mean, you can probably take on Contra Arcade in roughly 12 to 13 minutes. I mean... It is a very, very fast game to beat. But we're going to get closer here. We need to at least take on 100 enemies. And if you like this game, there are other games quite a bit like this, such as the Dungeons & Dragons games, which happen to be CPS 2 games. And I need my Turbo Mode Fire Activate button going on here. But yes, King of Dragons, great, great game. 
and there are a few other games like this in the arcade. And of course, Capcom is behind this awesomeness. Definitely get two other players and uh, have some fun here. So you got this out of me here. Okay. And I get a little bit of a level up upgrade there in the chest. My arrows are more powerful, times two. And it's very fun going through the different characters in this game and seeing the type of upgrades they get. And we're probably nearing 50 enemies or so in uh, due time here. So we still got a ways to go. I'll do my little clicker uh, to try to get to at least uh, the 70 opponents or so that I took on thus far. And again, this is a total order trying to take out 3,000 today. But I'm going to attempt it nonetheless. I have a few ideas to try to pull this off. Okay, we'll take out one more boss here. And I'm going to kind of average this at around 50 enemies once I take this boss out. And I love games with the uh, environments that change as you go through them. This is cool stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, we got uh, maybe 70 opponents out of the way. We got a while to go now. Uh, maybe we'll take out a little bit of Robotron 2084 because I have a feeling I could get another 100 opponents out of there on that one alone. Uh, we'll do Robotron. And this is one of my favorite quintessential arcade games from the way back when I used to go to Chuck E. Cheese. I'd play games like this, Galaga, Pac-Man, but I always put my quarters into this game first and foremost. And then, of course, I play stuff like uh, the Skee-Ball. I mean... It was funny at Chuck E. Cheese where once you were able to get a few tickets to pop out, you could get a firm grip on them and pull hundreds of tickets out. Not like you got any cool prizes or anything. I was lucky enough to get a big pen or a minor stuffed animal. Nothing incredibly cool at all. I would typically just give my uh, coupons that I got out to another kid who was also playing. Well, let's check this awesome out. And I love uh, multi-twin stick shooter games. We need to take out 100 opponents here. Get closer to our 3,000 uh, target today. This game becomes incredibly difficult at a very, very fast pace. And how many of you have actually played the uh, Nintendo 64 version of this? That game is nowhere near as cool as this version. Oh, great. This is getting much, much harder. Oh, great. Surrounded here. And this uh, parlays into the awesomeness of games such as Gauntlet Dark Legacy many years later. I love these twin six year games. Much, much more difficult. Oh, great. Come on now, I might have to continue here to take on these other enemies. Okay, come on, we can do this. Look, I'm only a few screens in, and look how incredibly crazy this is. These arcade games have no mercy whatsoever for you. Okay, I made it to the fourth wave here. I will try to continue here. I need to get 100 opponents out of the way. Of course, games like Gauntlet would uh, be able to pull this off as well. Looks like I definitely have my work cut out for me today. By the way, if you do the retroarch rewind on this, you kind of do it like a water paint style thing. It's very, very funny. You'd have to see it to believe it. I'm going to do that right now just to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to go to uh, uh, Quick Menu, Input, sorry, Input, Hockey Binds. For user one, I'm going to uh, turn on, sorry, user one right here, hot candy binds. I'm going to do the rewind. And remember, you're going to want to disable this when you're done. I'm going to program the rewind button to the R1 button for right now. And then if I want to come back, I can push the start to reset it. So I'm going to do it right now to the R1 button. And I'm going to back out. Go to frame throttle. Make sure rewind is enabled. Now I'm going to resume the game and watch what happens here. Oh no. Look at that awesome craziness there. That is awesome. I'm gonna try to get my 100 guys and every time I die, I can rewind time. Oh no, let's rewind. Look at that. This is redonkulous. Oh, rewind again. Woohoo! 
This is very, very funny because the graphical glitches definitely add to the element of awesomeness here. You're not gonna take me out now, I got rewind! Groundhog style! Nope! Rewind! Rewind! Rewind again! I'm almost to my 100 opponents there! Wow! Perpetual death there! No mercy whatsoever! How did any of you guys think I was ever making any work in this game? This is ridiculous! You have to do a complete uh, circular motion to even have a chance of escaping the wrath of these opponents! I'm gonna deem myself at 100 more opponents, I'm gonna turn off the throttle here in the options. Rewind. Disable, because if you leave it on, it's gonna affect a lot of cores and make it so they have a little bit of a sluggish appearance. Some cores run great with it, but I'm gonna go back into the input again and uh, disable that. Rewind under hotkey binds. I'm simply gonna push the start button. Now we're good to go. I can uh, go back to the game and exit normally. So we have 300 enemies out of the way. I'm gonna do three clicks on my clicker real quick as I exit the game. Wow, we got a while ago, 2,700 enemies to go. Okay, what are we going to play next? Uh, we'll do, uh, how about another game that people have asked me about, Nice of Valor, which previously had issues with sound. We're going to be able to run this with sound now. This is a great sound fix. And again, you're going to need the PGM BIOS zip in the same directory as your CLV folder with the game that you're running. Otherwise, you're going to get a C7 or C8 error upon trying to load the game. I recommend just uh, end the game and copy and PGM zip directly into your uh, COV folder. But let's check this cool, cool game out. And this is a game that I previously showcased on Final Burn Alpha 2012 and so on. Okay, 1999. Okay, let's check this awesomeness out. See if we can get some more enemies to take out. And we have quite a few more games to showcase today. I definitely read the comments and some of the games that you guys and gals have asked about, I threw into the mix today as far as test examples. But running much, much better than it ever did on the main 2010, FBA 2012, and of course FBA 2016. Great hack and slash game. Maybe we can get another 100 opponents out in this game. Should be uh, easy pickings here, slim pickings. Beautiful, beautiful game. I love all the games that uh, are Polygram Master games. Oriental Legend is another one that works on uh, the MAME 2003 Plus update. And again, I am running this on MAME 2003 Plus, not on one of the later arcade cores. And yes, you can actually hear sound now. This is awesome. And it has a two-player mode activate ability to it. So only 2,700 more opponents to go. Can we do this, guys and gals? I don't think it's going to be that easy, but I'm going to try. Oh, I got to go down. Okay, it's been a while since I played this. Much nicer without the slowdown, because there's definitely a hint of slowdown on the later arcade cores, as far as this game is concerned. And again, I'm a tremendous... Brawler fan, I'm loving that uh, we can relive and revisit many of these brawlers, especially on the main core, 2003, plus extreme and uh, standard cores. But again, I'm going to be showcasing main 2003 plus because this is such an incredible core. One of the most actively worked upon cores, uh, as you're going to soon see with many, many coding changes and future updates. And there are a few more hacks that I'm going to be showcasing today too, but we need to get up to this 3,000 kill number here. The kill ratio. And I don't know if I've ever actually seen this in the arcade. I really don't recall seeing this in the arcade. I've seen all the stuff like Killer Instinct, Tekken, Soul Calibur, all that, but I've never seen this in the arcade. Maybe in an amusement park, one of the bigger arcades they have in a well, there are uh, side places and such, but I have not personally seen this in an arcade. I wonder if any of you have ever seen this in an arcade. Again, this was 1999 when this came out. And we should be nearing another 100 opponents here. 
Taking that number down to 2,600 left. Still got a ways to go. But yes, I'm going to post this update by tomorrow and you're all going to be able to enjoy this with full sound now. Let's get through the first level here. That should uh, give me my 100 number here. And again, I'm going to probably, uh, I'm hopefully going to hit the 3,000 target. If not, go a little bit beyond it. But I'm going to do my best to pull this off today. And I missed the window for the Death Race 2000 uh, demonstration because I didn't do anything like this for the 2,000 subscriber milestone. And again, if I get to 5,000 subscribers, I don't even know how I'm going to be able to pull off 5,000 kills, but I'm going to attempt it. For every uh, milestone, I'm going to attempt to do another video where I take on that many enemies and be creative, and I'm going to avoid using games that I previously demonstrated. Like, uh, any game I play today, I'm not going to use in any of the future milestone videos. It'll be whole new games, and I'll have to find some creative way to pull off the count, kill ratios, and such. We should be nearing the end boss of the first stage here. I'll save my special attack for the boss. Very, very cool stuff here. And we'll maybe try uh, Oreo, Oriental Legend as well. And of course, uh, games like Gauntlet might help me get a few more kills. But I'm doing pretty good here. I'm getting fairly close to 100. I know it. Ah, what do we got to do there? Go, go! Oh, that's cool. I love that uh, 3D element there. That is really, really cool. Yeah! <laughs> the innocent bystanders. And this is perfectly fitting of the horse driver games because there's a nice bit of blood and gore in here. You saw me do a downward stab right into the opponent that was on the ground. That is really cool. Okay, I think we made it to 100 opponents there, so I'm going to do my clicker again and exit this game. Doing a lot better now. <laughs> 2,600 to go. Can we do this, guys and gals? We shall see. Okay, what are we going to do next? Uh, we're going to play... Uh, We'll do the great uh, Dungeons and Dragons Shadow Over Mystera. Both this and Tower of Doom are CPS2 games, so you're going to need Q Sound Zip. You can install this with the BIOS module. Unlike and I absolutely love both Shadow Over Mystera as well as Tower of Doom. These are definitely two quintessential games in a Capcom arcade classic catalog of games. I mean, these are incredibly awesome. And one thing that many of you might do is you insert coins prematurely before you get to see some of the cool intro sequences like this. I mean, this is a really cool sequence here. Just check it out. You get to see a little bit of a foreshadowing of what you're going to be taking on later on in the game. Look at this thing. This mammoth beast here. Unlike Game of Thrones, which took you a while to get to this point, you get to see it right from the get-go before you even start the game. Because, I mean, we're talking about Dungeons and Dragons after all. But let's check out this awesome, awesome game simply has a lot to offer. I mean, one of the coolest things is I love that it has a very cartoony approach. It really feels like you're playing a cartoon. And I'm going to play as a magic user to start with. And how many of you remember that 1980s uh, cartoon series, Dungeons and Dragons? I used to religiously watch that, along with many other cartoons. I mean, whatever happened to them great Saturday morning cartoons? I mean, all of us watched them back then. I have to say, my first foray into the online world was initially I started collecting obscure TV shows, cartoons, and of course movies. And I mean, I started out with a lot of stuff like Gilligan's uh, Planet. Many of you might not even know what that is, but it is a cartoon series with a sci-fi twist based on the Gilligan's Island aspect. And then of course, uh, stuff like Captain N, Turbo Teen, even the uh, Rubik's Cube cartoon series, GoBots, and so on. Then I moved on to some TV shows such as uh, Mr. Merlin... Manimal, Auto Man, loved Auto Man. If I think if you go back, Auto Man is only eight episodes. Manimal is only eight episodes. Yet uh, they actually show those quite repeatedly in syndication on TV. I mean, just funny that there was only eight episodes, but I remember the show so vividly. Cursor and Auto Man. Oh, and you have a little bit of a context menu here. I'll show you in a moment here. 
you can uh, push the R trigger, and you can pull up a whole variety of moves that's for each character. You, I have fireballs there, I have a little bit of a meteor shower. Okay, let's check out this one. Oh yeah! Another thing I really love about this game is that you can actually upgrade your characters, which never gets old. I mean, as I mentioned in uh, Top Gear 3000, and of course King of Dragons. This is very similar minded. Never gets old. Beautiful soundtrack to boot. And thinking back at some other uh, Saturday morning cartoons, I mean, I even watched The Littles way back then. I watched pretty much anything and everything that was on cartoons. I remember being so disappointed on Sunday mornings and uh, there being less cartoons. I mean, about the only cartoons they had on a Sunday morning would typically be Looney Tunes. But Saturday, from the get-go, all the way until like 11.30, awesomeness. And then, of course, I collected uh, stuff like VHS rips of Knight Rider, which I've covered in a few videos before. And what I love about the VHS rips versus the real DVD rips that, uh, should we say, the real DVD versions that came on later on, were the fact that they left the original music, such as Joan Jett, Pat Banatar, and uh, 38 Special completely intact. I mean, if we want to hear Mr. Feeney, a.k.a. Kit, and Michael Knight, a.k.a. David Hasselhoff, as far as uh, the great camaraderie and music, we want to be able to hear the real music, not this generic in lieu of place music. I mean, and of course, uh, Supernatural, I watch it on Netflix. I mean, I watch it on real TV, and then I caught up on Netflix, and I see that some of these seasons have the music removed, sadly enough. But some of the uh, music, like Leonard Skinner and Metallica, is still intact within the context of the Netflix series, but it is very, very painstakingly obvious when they remove the music, because the generic music is just so terrible and god-awful. So that is one reason to actually record from TV and use those as your main rips, because they're going to take that music out because of licensing issues after the fact. Need to use some more magic here. Oh, I'm out of that one. Let's see what else we have. We have a nice storm. Another thing that I really like about this game is that, uh, like God of War 2, once you beat the game, you can start out at the beginning with all your stats intact. I mean, that is a very, very cool thing, and I love seeing that in games where you do all this time and leveling up your characters, and then you start over and you're not starting from scratch. You can continue from the last point you were leveling up at, and that definitely adds to the element of the fun of the game. I do not believe God of War 1 allowed you to do that. I think when you beat God of War 1, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure when you beat God of War 1, you had to start over again. And I thought God of War 2 is the one that allowed you to continue those stats. And by the way, I see that uh, God of War, uh, for PlayStation 4, won Game of the Year. I have not yet played this game. Let's take out this uh, shenanigans here. Oh yeah. And I love that uh, the magic attacks actually hurt the boss here. Because in a lot of games, you try to use your special or magic attacks. They don't do anything on the bosses whatsoever. Let's take out this war machine. Nothing to have in common with the uh, Marvel entity, of course. And I just uh, saw the teaser trailer for the next upcoming Infinity War movie. It looks pretty interesting, but I wish they would have shown it a little bit more. I know we'll have a full-fledged trailer in due time. Uh, what else do we have here? I'm going to use a different character to finish off this boss. Let's continue and uh, pick uh, Master Swordsman. Why not? Let's see if I can even get the last final hit on this guy. Okay. What other attacks do I have? Oh yeah, it looks like this guy's done. <clears throat> this reminds me of a few elements of the great Willow game too. One of my favorite arcade games. And unlikely to ever see that re-released, obviously, due to the licensing issues. But I did do a full playthrough of that game. Complete with a little bit of a... Uh, Basically, drumming as well. Just spontaneous drumming, as you see me do quite a few times in my videos. But fantastic game, and look, you can level up awesome stuff here. And I'm going to move on to another game that people have been asking about. We're going to check out this great uh, overhead uh, shoot 'em up game. It is uh, called Thunder Zone, a.k.a. Desert Storm. 
And this is a game that many people have been having issues with in uh, previous uh, core releases. But it is uh, running considerably better on MAME 2003 Plus now. And again, we have Data East behind this awesomeness. In my testing, uh, there are a few uh, choke points in the game, but overall, it is a thoroughly enjoyable experience. And what Day to East game is actually bad? If any of you can name a bad Day to East game, I'd be thoroughly surprised. Again, you're going to have a little bit of slowdown here and there, but overall, the game is very, very playable in comparison to before. And I absolutely love this uh, guitar-esque soundtrack here. We need more electric guitar in our games. This really gets you uh, pumped up. Right here is one of them choke points. A little bit of slowdown, but once you get past there, it definitely picks up speed. Sometimes I find slowdown uh, a welcome addition in some games because if you're in a really uh, tough part, you can use that to, to exploit the AI of the game. But the whole game doesn't play like this, only for the initial portion from what I tested thus far. But some people were trying to load this before and it wouldn't even load for them, but it's running really nicely right now. Let's get past this choke point. Uh, let's just use our uh, bomb blast attack. Okay, now it should start picking up speed. There we go. Much better. And it feels like I'm playing a game a little bit like Shock Troopers and earlier Shock Troopers. Very, very cool stuff here. Another great two-player mode activate button. Get absolutely digging this soundtrack here. This is a missed opportunity for a fantastic G.I. Joe game. Love this uh, pseudo-parallax scrolling that's going on in the foreground there. I love that type of stuff where you have 3D objects popping and multi-layers, all that cool stuff. This is more prevalent on uh, systems such as Sega Genesis versus systems as uh, Super Nintendo. It's getting a chopper, get to the chopper. And the latest Predators movie does have a nice uh, parody play on uh, Get to the Chopper, of course. I'm not going to spoil it, you just have to see for yourself. But incredible game, really digging this. And very happy that it runs much better than it ever did before. Oh, great. Kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, stuff like the game POW as well, but more of a gun-based shooter than a hand-to-hand -hand combat game, and POW is a great game as well. Oh yeah. Okay, it looks like we took care of them apples. <laughs> Here's kind of what reminds me of POW a little bit, the type of indoor type uh, S levels. Very, very cool game. Definitely a great recommendation, uh, Restart Point. So this one runs a lot better. Okay, we're down to roughly 2,400 uh, kills <laughs> to go. So we're going to move uh, to another great game here. We're going to... Really pull out the big guns here. We're going to go to one of the most violent arcade games of all time. This is another one that many people have had trouble with. But there are two little tricks you need to do when you run it. I'm going to be running NARC. The very first time you run this from the main user interface, you're going to get to a point where you can't start the game because it has to do a little bit of an infram to it. So what you're going to do is once you get to that point, and I'll show you once it gets past this uh, bio uh, startup boot up sequence here. But again, this is one of the most incredible arcade games and also one of the most ultra-violent ones. And if you play this, there's a touch of humor in it as well as you're going to see within the next few minutes. And yes, when you plug in an arcade game, this is the type of thing you get to see at the, uh, from the get-go. You usually see them running, but uh, when they plug these in in the morning, this is what you see. And you're going to get to the point where you can't even get past this point here. What you're going to need to do is just simply exit your game completely and come back in, then you're going to be able to get past here. If you try restarting it, it'll crash on you. The other thing is I'm running this on MAME 2000. MAME 2000 is the only core for the Mini Classics that runs this well. But we should be able to get another 100 or 200 kills on this game because this is just so incredibly violent and cool, you'll see. And beautiful, beautiful graphics and very, very funny comparing this to the uh, Nintendo version because that game was so atrocious. And look at this great weapon I have here. I should have another rocket left. 
Look at that. <laughs> Blowing up in the body chunk there. And he'll definitely be using a lot of quarters on this one. There's a crouch maneuver that you'll uh, find comes in handy later on in the game. Yes, you can actually touch him and bust him, but I'm just going to take him out. Dad's in a body count here. It's definitely a type of game that you want to go all the way through, and you can beat it in probably 15 to 20 minutes. And we need a two-player mode activator. here. I'm going to activate uh, Turbo Fire, see if I can get a better uh, gun right here. Okay, not really much better. You just need a better gun. More rockets. Definitely could use more of those. Watch it. Bam! <laughs> Never gets old. Can't pump the controller there. Sorry. There's a little bit of variety in the gameplay as well as you'll see. And uh, one thing I find very funny. They do this in some games. You can take out pretty much every enemy in a very violent and gory fashion, but there is a specific enemy that you're not able to take out, and you'll see what I mean when I get to it. Should be like one or two levels then, if I remember correctly. But we're already up in that body count. We should be down to 2,200 or less uh, by the time this is over. Man, it looks like the guy from the Karate Kid, the uh, bad guy in Karate Kid. This is definitely not a game for kids. I almost want to load up the NES version and compare how awful in comparison it is to this version. This is a fantastic version. And like many uh, Midway Ballet games, uh, these typically have issues on some of the later courts, such as MAME 2003 and on, but they generally run fantastic on MAME 2000. So if you have games like even Mortal Kombat not running, and you're not running the custom OSTs, they run much better on MAME 2000. But for the most part, I run... 99.5% uh, of my games on, of course, uh, Main 2003 Plus, Extreme, and Standard. But some of the very, very stubborn games that are due to CPU and GPS, <laughs> not GPS, GPU and touch of nature, I run on Main 2000. Look at these enemies. They can take me out, but I can't take them out. The only thing I can do is shoot them. Watch this. I shoot them, and they turn into puppies. Watch this. I find it very, very funny. You'll see when they come back on the screen. There we go, look, they turn into puppies and run off the screen. So the game does not allow you, they did a nice thing where they do not allow you to actually harm any animals. You just puppify them. I find that very, very funny. You're blowing up enemies in bloody chunks, and then uh, you try uh, taking out one of the dogs, they turn into a little puppy. That is absolutely hilarious. Okay. Do one or two more levels. There's a level where you can actually drive as a car too, which I always found very fun. Might be this level here. We're on our way. What is that about? I think we're down to about uh, 2,200 kills by the time I do this demonstration here. Look at that, I can float in the air. How cool is that? <laughs> you can run out of me. There we go. Reminds me of when I played. <laughs> oh, this is cool. When you play Dead Rising and you were able to ride the car in the tunnels, then you ran out of uh, fuel, then you had to take that long backtrack back, remember that stuff? I wonder what happens if I step on one of these. Let's find out. Bam! You probably do a chain reaction and hit like five of those in a row if you have them lined up right. But definitely a fun game. Do a two player mode activate on this. Let's get into the car one or two more times. What was that about? <laughs> okay. I don't really last in a car too long. I usually... I jumped out of the car by accident there. Look at that little puppy running. Oh man, they're mauling me while I'm in the car. They can maul me, but I can turn them into puppies. That's it. Oh, let's take these guys out. I'm getting swarmed by enemies here. Need a two-player mode activate capability here. There we go. Let's run the car backwards. Why not? 
<laughs> this is definitely a very cool game to play in the arcade. Uh, I got some missiles here I can take out as well. I love this uh, really upbeat soundtrack here. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Need to use a code for unlimited missiles. I'm definitely add to the ante here. And I keep running into the garbage dumpsters. There's uh, one little clip I remember from Watch Abuse about it. I've never been able to find the episode again, but I remember when they made a joke about naming the kid Pantera and telling uh, Pantera to take out the trash. Damn it, Pantera, take out the trash! That is so funny, I just can't remember what episode it's from. It might have been one of the banned episodes. Like the one where uh, Beavis and uh, Butthead are trying to smuggle drugs and going down into Mexico. They banned that one. I don't think I've ever seen it show up on TV again. But it's funny how we used to think uh, Beavis and Butthead and stuff like that were just crazy uh, over the top. But some of the more recent cartoons, like even Big Mouth on Netflix, is actually doing... Oh, look at I got stuck on the chopper. Stuff like Big Mouth on Netflix is actually doing more than even Beavis and Butthead did back then. I mean, you don't have to worry as much about censors when you're on the streaming service as you would on normal TV. Like, even South Park has its limitations. Oh, man, look at that dog completely mauling me. But let's see what happens when it, oh, it turns into a little puppy. Okay, so we definitely have uh, over 200 kills here. We're going to move on to another game. Get my clicker and do 200 more there. And if you're wondering why Narc runs better on MAME 2000, it's because it is a far less accurate core than the later cores. I mean, some of the more stubborn games just run better on that with our more limited CPU and GPU intensive nature, hardware-wise. Right now we're going to be taking on the uh, Gauntlet arcade version, but in a very special way. We're going to be playing it in the context of Gauntlet 4 for Mega Drive, aka Sega Genesis. This has a great soundtrack to accentuate the arcade version, as well as a quest mode. And of course, uh, Tengen is a subdivision company that was originally concocted and devised in order to uh, be able to circumvent the technology, the copyright protection of the original Nintendo Entertainment System cartridges. Because initially, okay, right here we have Arcade Quest and Battle Mode, very cool, I'm going to do Arcade Mode. Initially, Nintendo would uh, require companies to pay $10 per cartridge in order to manufacture them on their behalf. And companies like Atari did not like this at all, so they uh, went around them. And they actually posed as representatives from Nintendo in order to acquire the patent and how to uh, overwrite the protection. Great, great soundtrack here. And we should be able to take out 100 enemies quite easily here. Use keys to open doors. And I love the quest mode as well. Definitely a great thing. Oh, great. We'll use our potion to take out 36 ghosts here. There we go. 36 down. And, of course, uh, companies like Konami uh, had Ultra as a subdivision so they could release more than five cartridges per year. That is why we had uh, games such as Roller Games, Snake's Revenge, Metal Gear, and uh, Mission Impossible, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Defender of the Crown, and so on with the Ultra logo, label should I say, rather than the Konami label. They had a lot of productivity and it would have been pretty bad if we only had five Konami cartridges per year, let alone five Capcom cartridges per year. And I love playing this the Elfin's game because I can just, uh, just run right through. We need to take out at least a hundred enemies here. Now I love my dungeon crawler games, I'm definitely going to be getting more into more of these style of uh, games in the future. And I'd have to say my favorite Gauntlet versions would obviously be uh, Gauntlet Dark Legacy, the arcade version. And of course uh, the original Nintendo version of Gauntlet. I love that uh, take on things as well. Okay, we should be able to make it up to 100 quite easily within this level alone. You might notice uh, one thing that some Genesis games has have in common with one another, such as uh, Adventures of Batman and Robin and this Gauntlet 4, is that they have the music at a higher volume than they do the actual sound effects. Especially if you play the Adventures of Batman and Robin, it can be somewhat disconcerting to a degree. Okay.
Thought I had a magic potion, I must have used it or shot it by accident. And of course, I'd be better at the warrior or the Valkyrie to be able to do the hand to hand combat here. And unfortunately, I haven't been able to get Gauntlet Legends, which is a great Dreamcast version of Gauntlet, to run on uh, the Recast Core yet. It feel, it reads it as a music CD, but it's something that we could look into. Not sure if any of you guys and guys have gotten it running yet. Okay, we're past 100 kills there, but this is a great, great game. Definitely digging it. Now, uh, since we're down to roughly 2,100 kills left to go, we're going to have to move on to uh, laying the hammer down, so to speak. We're going to enlist the aid of Thor. And hopefully he'll help us get a few more uh, 100 kills. Uh, we're going to play the Nintendo DS version of Thor God of Thunder, which is made by Way4 Technologies. Fantastic game, well worth your time. Again, uh, Way Forward has a great ratio of good to bad games. Let's check this out. Okay. I'm going to do the second stage. I'm going to bypass the tutorial so we can get right into the frenetic action here. Come on, Thor. You can help me tech out at least 100 or 200 more opponents. It is an incredible move set, which reminds me a lot of uh, some of the moves you typically have in your Incredible Hulk games. The Ground Slam. That is awesome, never gets old. The soundtrack is really cool with the boot. Great uh, brawler side-scrolling game. Look at this awesomeness. I can do this. <laughs> How cool is that? Now, of course, I have uh, magic I could use. Like that. After we lay down the uh, Thor's hammer and such, we're going to move on to a couple more games and uh, hopefully get our 3,000 plus kills by then. Take out another uh, platform here. There you go, dang. This is much better than Thundercats, even though Thundercats is a very funny game to play for how bad it is. Again, they use an impeccable use of the dual screens, especially considering your character can typically fly in the uh, comics and cartoons and movies. Like, check this move out. Oh, he uh, they already jumped down. But you can do some nice aerial combat. I'll show you, too, when uh, we get an enemy that uses that. Look at that. That was very cool. Use some more magic. <laughs> now I'm digging the soundtrack as well. Very, very cool soundtrack.
great presentation here. Just thoroughly impressed. And I ended up doing uh, the full screen by accident with my trigger. Can't bump the controller as usual. And we all know that by now, many superhero games don't get justice, but uh, Way 4 did an incredible job with this, uh, as well as the Brave and Bold game, also on DS. And of course, they made the more recent uh, DuckTales Remaster game. I'd love to see what they do next. But we should definitely be nearing yet another 100 kills in our goal to get 3,000 today. It's definitely going to be crazy when we get to, uh, to the point where I have to do 5,000. I'm not sure how I'm going to handle that. There we go. Look how cool that was. And you can definitely do some really cool combo moves once you get more adjusted to the controls. There's only one thing that I'm not a big fan of in games, and I'll show you once we get to that part in a moment here, because I did do a little test run on this level. And you know what them, uh, that type of moment in the game would be that I'm not a fan of? Escort missions. Look at this. But at least it is not uh, completely annoying in this game. This is more manageable, but I cannot attack at all. I just have to avoid the enemies to get her to uh, safety. But typically, I'm not a big fan of uh, escort missions whatsoever in games. Of course, uh, Resident Evil 5 has a lot of this, and that's why I kind of stopped playing it. But again, not as annoying as some games I've played. There's a specific Zelda game, which I had a friend actually rage quit on because of that alone. But yeah, so we had Thor take down another 100 kills. Uh, we're going to really pull out the big guns here, but... Oh, uh, this is an incredible game, definitely worth checking out. Let's see what else we have to check out here. And I'm accident drastic. Okay, looking at the tally on my clickers, we have roughly 1,950 enemies left to vanquish in order to complete the 3,000 enemy challenge. We're going to look uh, to a great retro classic arcade game called None Other Than Tempest, which is going to be running much better than ever before on MAME 2003. It had some issues in the past such as the inability to load it all due to audio timing issues. And of course, uh, the vector and such didn't really display properly. If I go into the core options right here, this is something you're going to be able to do with MAME 2003+. Plus. I wouldn't muck with these settings. I would leave these the way they are. But you're going to have uh, vector, resolution, anti-aliasing, beam width, translucency, flicker, and intensity all accounted for in a much better way, closer to the true arcade experience. So there's a beautiful thing, and all the vector games are going to basically be running much better and prettier and more vibrant looking, as you will see right in a moment here. So let's see if we can knock some of these enemies out. And I actually uh, played this game for one of the uh, more difficult challenges on the PlayStation 4 Atari Flashback Collections. And uh, I had to do one of the harder difficulty levels in the game without dying a single time. That was definitely a challenge. But let's see if we can knock out about 50 enemies here. And I'm loving all these vector games. And uh, Star Wars is also fixed. There's uh, the fourth stage when you get to it. It actually go endlessly and never be able to be completed. It is now fixed. So Star Wars runs great. And all these uh, various vector games run. So the Midway, Bally, and vector games all run great on uh, MAME 2003+. Plus. Now I'm going to save these bombs for a uh, rainy day here. If I get into a little bit of a jam. Now I'm thinking of another uh, retro arcade game that I really like is... Uh, the game called Crow. I'm going to definitely do more Crow in the next video. And uh, the Atari 2600 version had something really cool at the beginning too, which is a little bit like a uh, kaboom, where you have to take out as many enemies as you can in succession. I'm going to try to maybe use that to knock off a few more kills here. But we should be able to at least get uh, 50 enemies here, hopefully before the end of this game. Okay. Very, very cool game. Loving all these vector games. Battle Zone also works great. Yeah, it won't be too hard to get 50 enemies on this one. Definitely a very, very challenging game. So we should be down to almost 1900 by the end of this uh, little demonstration here. 
And I'm thinking of uh, maybe doing the Atari 2600 Crawl next nice to knock out a few more enemies, maybe 50 more. We got a few more games, and uh, this is obviously going to be more than an hour because I'm taking on 3,000 enemies, but it is what it is. It is a celebratory video of all you awesome, amazing subscribers and such. Okay, I'm going to say I have 50 there, and I'm going to move on to Atari 2600 Crawl and see how many I can take out in the beginning of that. I always had a lot of fun trying to get as many as I could when I played that game initially many, many years ago. So I'm going to the Atari 2600 version of Crawl, and I'm definitely going to be showcasing more Crawl in the next video for Horse Travaganza. But the very beginning is like a boom where you have to take out as many enemies as possible. I remember this music like yesterday. Should be able to get hopefully 50 here. There's also a new shmup that you're going to be able to play with the update that I'm going to do next. Take out some more enemies. This is definitely one of those fun games where you have to compete with uh, somebody else and see who can get more of these. Come on, I can do 50 here. It's getting harder and faster. Like a boom. Oh no. Oh great. Oh, well, I got uh, close to 50 there. So I'm going to say I'm at about 1,850 now. We're going to do this other shmup right now. Maybe knock down some more enemies. This is a great, great shmup, and I'm a big shmup fan, and I love bringing these to you guys and gals. Okay, we're going to do Varia Metal, and this uh, does not work on Main 2003 Extreme. It only works on Plus right now. And Varia Metal, of course, is another shmup test, a game that is well worth your time if you're a shmup fan. It didn't previously run on Main 2003, but now it runs on Plus incredibly well. Winners don't use drugs, FBI. Message! How many of you remember that uh, Don't Me a Menace to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood? Great, great movie. Love anything related to the Wines Brothers, including the original In Living Color. And uh, there's a very funny moment when they kept having uh, Keenan Avery Wines uh, pretty much show up as a baby. Anytime some type of morality clause came to front in the movie and he would go, Message! It was funny. And I love all the Wines uh, Brothers and family such as Keenan. Damon, Sean, Marlon, and of course Kim. They're all great and all the stuff they did follow it up with. And of course I also watched uh, the stuff that Jim Carrey went on to do. But let's see if we can knock out some more kills here. Again, the first time I saw uh, Don't Be a Menace, uh, I didn't think it was the greatest movie, but it really holds up well. It showed up quite a bit on Comedy Central, and uh, I still love the movie to this day. Okay, I lost my life there. Can't bump the keyboard controller, so to speak. It looks like we have another two-player mode activate going on here. There are some moments in... Uh, uh, don't be a menace that I can't really go into because they're more adult oriented, but they're very funny moments that I love to get a kick out of every once in a while. I'm going to use my special check here. Because anytime you have a moment where you uh, know you might be taken out by the camp on the keyboard, so to speak, use your special attack and or magic ability. I'm going to enact uh, the turbo fire claws here. Hold down the attack button and then push the select button while you're holding down the attack button until turbo fire is activated. And by the way, this also works with the Drastic Core, because it also uses Clover Con. Many of you have uh, not been aware of that, but yes, you can use Turbo Fire on the Drastic Core as well. But very, very cool stuff in here. I'd highly recommend uh, disabling Turbo Fire before you exit back to the home menu. Oh, great. We need to at least take out 100 enemies here. Oh, great. I can always continue and get a few more enemies there. I'll try to do a little bit better second time around here. Another movie that I'm kind of looking forward to that's coming out is going to be the Glass movie, which is a follow-up to, of course, uh, Split and uh, the original Unbreakable with Bruce Willis. It's going to be a fun movie, and hopefully M. Night Shyam uh, Shyamalan will do a better job this time around because he has had a few duds intertwined within the legacy of some of his incredibly great movies. He started out really strong with Sixth Sense, and then uh, I watched... Uh, a couple of the movies he did before Sixth Sense, which I also thoroughly enjoyed. Very, very cool game. Definitely enjoying this one. Pretty straightforward, uh, good shmup here. And I definitely need a little more practice here. But again, I'm going to enlist the aid of some unlikely heroes to be able to pull off the rest of the 3000 uh, challenge today. Have a... Uh... Okay, boss battle. We'll take this one out, and then we'll move on to the next game.
Okay. Always nice when you can shoot the rockets the bosses launch at you. As I said, uh, a little bit more manageable. That's not always the case in many shmups, of course. Oh, great. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to move on to some more games. Uh, we're uh, closing up the gap here. We're going to have an Unlikely Hero, another cartoon uh, series that happened to be based off of a video game as well. It's also a great Nintendo game, but we're going to be playing the arcade version of it. And I forgot to disable Turbo Fire, but it should still uh, not be a problem since I'm going right to another game. We're going to do this great game, uh, Bucky O'Hare. This is a great uh, pseudo side scrolling shmup game, as you will see in a moment here. And we should definitely be able to close up the gap and hopefully get to 3,000 kills in no time here. Another great four player mode activate uh, game, as far as I remember from last playing it. And Konami is behind this awesomeness. Again, if you like this, definitely check out the great uh, cult classic, more obscure uh, gem of a game on Nintendo as well. They're completely different games while we're checking out. And we have our typical boot up sequence, as I showed in a couple other games in this video. Okay. Very, very cool, cartoony game, just like the uh, Shadow Over Mysterio and Tower of Doom. And should definitely be able to get a few more kills here. Very, very fun game, and this is one of the very first ones that I ever played on the NES Classic, in fact. Digging this uh, music as well, very cool music, presentation, cartoony style. Definitely worth checking out if you're uh, a shmup fan, especially a side-scrolling shmup fan. Very deceptively cute because it is not the easiest game to play. It actually has a challenge factor to it. Okay, we're going to move to some big guns after this and hopefully be able to finalize the 3,000 vanquished opponents today. And again, I'm going to be dreading the day when I get to 5,000 and have to take on 5,000 total enemies. And some people suggest that I try stuff like God of War, but I'm going to try to keep these two more obscure games as much as remotely possible. Some of this music reminds me a little bit of the great heavy metal movie from the way, way early 80s. I absolutely love that movie and love uh, John Candy's role in that movie. As well as the South Park episode where they made fun of it and did a parody on it. That was hilarious. And there's another movie I used to watch way, way back then, roughly around the same time, called Fantastic uh, Planet, which is a French film. Very, very interesting movie. I have not seen that in years, but I want to look it up again. Okay, let's see if we can uh, take out a good hundred or enemies or so. And we're going to move to uh, more Unlikely Heroes after this. So we might have to call in uh, uh, some support from Rainbow Bright. Yes, we're going to use Rainbow Bright to get to our 3,000 kills today. We can do this. Should only need about 1,300 more enemies by the time uh, this is done. Should I say 1,700 more enemies? We're going to be up to uh, a little bit, around 1,300 enemies total. Okay, coolness. We'll try just a little bit of the next stage, see what it's all about. Very, very cool. And I think I'm going to be switching over to my PlayStation 4 and uh, call out some more Unlikely Heroes and try to get some more kills today. But very, very cool game. Definitely digging us. And it has a four-player mode to activate to make it even more incredibly fun. Great for USB hosts, obviously. Yeah, I'm going to hold down my attack button and then I'm going to hold down the select button to disable this Turbo Fire mode activate. But I hope you enjoyed all of these uh, selections today. And uh, I would love to see which uh, games you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, recommend for the next video where I try to take on so many enemies like this. And of course any other games that you suggest me try in the videos. But I try to get as many uh, games as you guys suggested into the video to show you how they run on MAME 2003 Plus and otherwise. 
Okay, we're gonna move over to the PlayStation 4 now, and uh, we'll see if we can finish off this challenge. Okay, we're definitely pulling out the big guns now. I cumulatively have roughly 1,700 enemies, give or take, left to go to complete this 3,000 enemy challenge. We're gonna load up this fantastic twin stick style shmup called Crimson Land on PlayStation 4. It is much akin to the likes of Robotron 2084, the inevitably awesome Smash TV, and of course, uh, its follow-up spiritual successor, Total Carnage. But great, great game, truly hectic and chaotic, as you will soon see in a moment here. I'm gonna give you a brief overview here. I love this uh, introduction music. It is very much like this celebrity deathmatch music of that great, great animated show that I talked about uh, a few minutes ago. But if you go into the extras here, once you load up Crimson Land, you can see the various weapons and perks that you can unlock throughout the course of your uh, normal campaign, aka quest mode. Many, many weapons. I have two left to unlock. And then, of course, perks that are much like Call of Duty. These can pop up amidst your gameplay as you level up, and uh, they do various things, as you will see once I play the game. Uh, let's get this show on the road. I'm going to load up survival mode, and I'm going to load the hardest difficulty and see how far I make it. Survival mode, blitz mode, activate! And it even has a nifty four-player mode, activate! To take advantage of if you so will. But in any case, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Celebrity Deathmatch. Many years ago when I used to frequent uh, IRC, aka Internet Relay Chat, there's a great server with a great channel where I was able to amass the entire collection of the Celebrity Deathmatch episodes. There's a little bit of a twist to it though, because I had to chat every 15 minutes in the main chat or a bat, uh, bot would kick you from the room. And suffice to say, I stayed up for 24 hours straight in order to amass the entire collection of episodes. Big, big fan. I really thoroughly hope they bring it back in the future, as the rumor uh, foretells and such. Uh, Highlander, you are immortal, well, almost immortal. So I have a chance of, a uh, 5% chance of enemies taking me down. Let's take this. So I have 95% invulnerability, but that 5% chance of being beheaded Highlander style, if an enemy touches me. Let's see if we can pull this off. And I'm also going to be talking about a, a great horror movie that's going to be coming up called Glass. It's a follow-up to, of course, both Unbreakable and Split. With uh, Bruce uh, Willis and, of course, uh, James McAvoy accordingly. Respectively, should I say. Okay, more experience. I can live with that. Come on. Stop touching me, enemies. Becoming much, much harder here. Fast shot. Yes, I need to shoot faster. Dodge attacks. Hmm. Do I want to dodge attacks or have a faster shot? I'll take a faster shot. And we got quite a few kills left to go. Let's see how many we can pull off here in this hardest ultimate uh, survival mode. And I have to say, this is probably the best 99 cent game that I ever purchased because uh, I would easily spend $10 on this game. I've had quite a bit of fun on it. Uh, cold blooded. Okay, uh, we'll do this one. Definitely pick this up if you find that sale. It's well worth it. Come on, give me a thousand kills here. And I'm definitely going to be having to uh, take on uh, Total Carnage and or, of course, uh, Smash TV in future videos where I take on more uh, challenges to take on as many enemies as possible. Oh, great. This is getting crazy. Hmm. Okay. Give me a nuke. <laughs> Save me here. Power-ups last 50% longer. Awesome. Incredibly awesome game here and definitely challenging. I mean, typically you might be lucky to get uh, 200 kills if you play this hardest difficulty, which I am right now. There's just simply no mercy from these enemies. And I got taken out. Let's see how many kills I got. 873. I can live with that. So I'm going to round it up to 900, which gives me 800 more kills to complete the challenge. So I'm going to move on to one other game right now, and uh, let's see what it is. With 800 kills left to go, let's do this. Uh, we're going to do Toy Soldiers War Chest. We're going to call out Rainbow Bright for the win. 
and I am most certainly a tremendously huge fan of this very niche offshoot genre of the tower defense game. And it all started and originated with Warcraft as a mini game intertwined within. But my first true experience with tower defense was on the PlayStation 3 with the venerably awesome Pixel Junk Monsters. From that point forward, I absolutely loved any and all tower defense games that I could give a shot to. And of course, uh, Toy Soldiers was on Xbox uh, 360. Two of them were, in fact. I was thoroughly disappointed that these didn't make it to PlayStation 3, but very, very happy and ecstatic that this made it to PlayStation 4, complete with licensed characters to boot. And unofficial characters as well, as you will see in a moment here. If I go to Hero Select, we have Star Bright, which is obviously based off of uh, Rainbow Bright. And there are a few other cool character sets as well, as you'll see in a moment here once this loads. This isn't the highest rated game, but again, with niche genres, you have your fan base. I absolutely got a kick out of this game, and I still love playing it every once in a while. But uh, we're going to be getting into the mix of our various armies that can all level up throughout the course of the main campaign and such. And again, we have uh, Star Bright, which is Rainbow Bright there. And then we have uh, Dark Lord. Not exactly sure what that is trying to be a play on. But uh, if you can think of what Dark Lord could be a take on, let me know. Then we have the real American hero, G.I. Joe, as well as Cobra Commander. He-Man Masters of the Universe. Okay, where's Transformers? Why do you have He-Man and G.I. Joe but no Transformers? Come on now. And of course, Assassin's Creed. And then I'm not exactly sure what Kaiser Wilhelm will be. I mean, it's fairly generic. And then uh, Phantom kind of reminds me of the Starhawks. But we're going to go back and get into the single player campaign. And we're going to ba basically decimate some Care Bears, My Little Ponies, and all kinds of other good stuff in Bubble Brook and try to get our 800 kill counter. It's kind of funny because uh, while the games are loaded, it has a little thing on the bottom where it says smooth in terrain, making plane noises, mowing the lawn, just funny things like that. I was actually hooking up uh, Roku for somebody recently, and it was doing little things like this on the bottom of the screen. And it's like, what does winding up toys mean? I'm like, it's trying to be funny. It's trying to be sarcastic and cynical at the same time and poke a little fun that the load times are there while it's downloading. But uh, this is really, really cool, and I'm really hoping I can pull off 800 uh, kills decimate some My Little Pony, and of course the other various uh, cartoon characters that these are a play on. Very, very cool stuff, and there's a tremendous variety of uh, gameplay for those who want to give this a shot. The top right are the uh, waves of enemies that are going to be coming in, and they're going to be trying to invade my lunchbox, which is over here. And at the top left is the meter that I have, 100 health meter. Then I have 1,543 US dollars, whatever currency it's in. At the bottom left, I have a gauge that can increase if I uh, do a combo of multiple enemies in a row. And I can do some cool stuff, especially when I'm playing as He-Man's army. Such as I uh, have Battle Cat and or He-Man come on the battlefield. I'm going to build a bubble gun. I'll do a bubble gun uh, right here. And I'll build another one over here. Why not? And I can even upgrade this if I would like to as well. I'll upgrade it right now. Uh, damage right there. Accuracy. Armor. I'm going to do the damage. And I can even get inside this with a joystick and take these enemies out manually if I want to. But we have about 25 enemies out of our 800 right now. Anything that looks cute is a gunner. Of course, I'm going to do a little bit of the He-Man as well and uh, do the Dragon Stage. Give you a little Genesis Quad of how that works. Oh, look at this. I have some exploding barrels there. Let's see what happens if I blow those up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll launch another wave here. Why not? Now I'm going to build uh, a laser gun here. It'll be better on armor-based enemies. You gotta keep an eye on these enemies as they come through. And I can even do this nifty thing where I have uh, Pegasus. And I can control him uh, and take out some enemies like this. That is pretty cool. Kind of like a uh, Battlefront style. And a lot of the stages have various things that you can control like that. This is a great, great multiplayer game. Especially when you have He-Man going up against G.I. Joe. That is very, very funny. Look, we have some Care Bears on the way. Uh, let's turn around and take out some more enemies out. And I have 24 seconds left before this expires, this uh, Pegasus here. 
And uh, yes, it takes a little bit of skill to get used to it. It's just like in Battlefront. Just watch what happens. Bam! <laughs> Do some more leveling up here. Make the uh, range better so it can take out enemies from a farther distance. Same here. And definitely, uh, I can build, like, uh, more, uh, robust, bigger, more powerful ones, too, for air and ground combat as well. But I need a little bit more money to pull that off. But for right now, I'm just gonna build up a little bit of a defense here. Have two, uh, laser-style weapons, as well as these bubble blow machines for fast enemy fodder that are weaker in nature. There's a bunch on the way there. Oh, uh, we got a bunch of Care Bears. Come on, we don't need any Care Bears here. Go down! It's only about 700 more enemies to go. We could do this, guys and gals. And as I destroy these enemies, I get more money to use to upgrade my armaments and such. And another uh, tower defense game that some of you might be aware of would obviously be Field Runners. But other ones that I like are like uh, Savage Moon, great, great game on PlayStation 3, as well as on PSP. We need some Smurfs in this game. I want to take out some Smurfs too while we're at it. And I just leveled up, so that means when the stage is over, I'm going to gain some more uh, upgrades that'll help me out the next time I play a level. Care Bears going down. We can do these 800 enemies. I know we can. Make that a little bit more powerful. Take out the rest of these Care Bears. Okay, that's working. And yes, the enemies can actually take your towers down too, especially when they're more powerful. Looks like we have some My Little Pony style enemies on the way. Gotta build something a little bit more powerful here. More damage on that. More damage on that. Now we see these uh, My Little Pony style enemies would be uh, tank based. That is where the lasers are coming in handy. But I want to uh, use these little things here. The bigger uh, things and build like uh, the bigger artillery for air and ground. You'll see that too. Oh great. Take these guys down. Now, I love the variety of combat because, I mean, you do have your stuff like Rainbow Bright, Care Bears and all that, but you also have your stuff like G.I. Joe and Masters of the Universe inspired levels and, of course, stuff that has dragons in it, which is always cool. I'm going to manually take these enemies out. As I said, these are pretty powerhouse enemies here. There we go. I should have enough to have more artillery for the more powerful enemies that are going to obviously be coming in the future here. We're going to be near 200 enemies soon here. Let's build a, a lobber here. We'll do it right here. See what the range is. This should be able to throw some bombs at enemies. Yep, that has a good circumference radius there. And I have, uh, right here I'm going to use this one to build some anti-aircraft uh, and such when they fly in. So far so good though. Keep upgrading stuff here. Oh, more damage on that. Why not? I want to keep boosting my damage rate on these. And we should be the 300 enemies in no time. Okay, we got some enemies that are getting to my toy box there. Oh, great. See, we got some, like, ready to get into my box there. <laughs> Gotta keep my meter at 100. It looks like I'm gonna lose one there. So far, so good. Let's upgrade this a little bit more. Add more damage. More damage, it'll take my life quicker. More range. And I have my Pegasus uh, boot here. 
Well, we're going to be getting up to that 300 enemies in no time here. See, with that more power, I'm taking these enemies out a lot quicker. Bye-bye, Care Bears. You're going down in no time. <laughs> and you can even uh, convert these uh, bubble guns into rubby, rubber ducky shooters if you want to. But like I said, I'm going to do a little bit of He-Man as well, so you can get a gist of how that plays. You're going to see both uh, the Rainbow Bright 4A as well as the He-Man 4A. These enemies are going to be coming out more increasingly. Get more range from my lasers there. Yeah, I'm hoping to beat this entire level with 100 on my uh, launch box meter. I'll beat 800 enemies no, in no time with this. It, along with the G.I. Joe or He-Man levels. What else can I upgrade here? More range. I need 500 to do more range here. But I want to build something for anti-aircraft here. I need at least a thousand to do that. Let's do this manually here. It's always fun to jump right into the turrets. Definitely loving the variety of gameplay. Now, this was not really a well-reviewed game, but it's more of a niche thing, as I mentioned. I definitely had my fun with it. It de definitely has its audience. Okay, I can build the anti-aircraft now. We're going to do that with this. Shoot and start anti-aircraft. I'm going to try to upgrade this uh, thing here if I can yet. There we go, more damage. And I'm going to need uh, more distance once we get 500. Need 500 to pull that off. Take out these My Little Pony sons of whatever they are. Look how quick they're going down with my uh, boosted power here. I'm going to make it so enemies won't be able to get as close to my base here. By making it more powerful. And then of course uh, increase in the range once I get 500 here. There we go. So range and damage. Then of course I have the Pegasus if I need to use it. For right now I'm uh, going to keep trying to increase the power of my towers. As much as I possibly can. Now, I want to increase the damage on this one as well. Okay, so far so good. I even launched the next wave uh, earlier. I think I can pull this off. We're near the halfway point now. We only need about 400 more enemies and we're good to go. We should be able to pull this off. And we got some uh, aerial enemies as you can see there. I might jump into Pegasus in a moment here. I just want to make sure I'm all good on everything here. Increase the range. See if I can increase anything else on there. Range. And once they start attacking, uh, obviously I would want to increase my armor on these towers. Like this, right here would be the armor. Uh, 750 to give me a higher range there. There we go. Close. Okay, I'm pretty good on defense right now. And you can also heal the uh, towers as well if you want to. Definitely becomes uh, very, very important in the later stages, which are more incredibly difficult. I might be okay for now. Um, in the next wave, I'm going to get uh, Pegasus in air again. Why not? I'll get Pegasus in air now. See if I can take any Care Bears out with Pegasus. What do we have to take out here? There we go. Yeah, there we go. And there are batteries uh, interlaced throughout the stage that increase your uh, time limit if you find those as well. Again, this would be pretty funny multiplayer wise. Hey dude, I just took your He-Man out with Rainbow Bright. You see my meter there in the way bottom left? If I get that, I can get a, a ground component. Uh, should be able to get to that. Go for broke here. Now I have Starbright available here. 
If I push the triangle button, I'll do that on the next wave. Now I can use her on the ground here. Let's see where the enemies are coming from. Right there. I can take Rainbow Bright right on this st stage if I want to. Or I can wait till I level up to the uh, Unicorn. I'm just going to take her on the stage right now. And you can do this with He-Man as well in Battle Cat. This is very cool. Very, very funny. I believe he says, uh, by the power of Grayskull as well. And speaking of He-Man, how many of you have seen that uh, one cartoon where they have He-Man singing uh, Four Nine Blondes, what's going on? That is probably one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Yes, uh, this Rainbow Bright's going to be taking out your He-Man if you ever play me online. I'm going to make sure of it. I challenge any of you who want to play me online in this. I'll use Rainbow Bright against your He-Man or G.I. Joe, and I will decimate you. And I have 48 seconds left. <laughs> Battle Cat's very, very cool to use. Who else do we have to take out there? What the hell is that? There we go. Up close and personal. And uh, I'm sorry to say that they rated this game an average of 5 to 6 out of 10. I consider it a little bit better than a 5. Maybe they got their butts kicked by Rainbow Bright and My Little Pony and the Care Bears and they decided to rate it 5 out of 10. We're definitely going to be having our 800 here. And I have plenty of money to upgrade now. Get everything fully upgraded. I can even build another thing here. I'll upgrade the wazoo out of this as well. And again, I leveled up, so I'll be able to have more upgrades for the next time I play the stage. See what else I can upgrade here. I can even build another uh, lobber here. Why not? Really just go for broke here. Everything's almost leveled up fully here. Okay, and I still have quite a bit of money left, so I should be able to upgrade this even more. And yeah, we're going to be able to do almost all 800 enemies right here and now. But hopefully uh, some of you who haven't played uh, Tower Defense before consider this to be a unique genre and give it a shot. Because it's really helped me get my last 800 kills. I'm going to launch the next wave uh, in advance here. And I'll do a little bit of the next uh, stage using uh, He-Man, just so you can see how that plays out. But I have a perfect record on the stage, which is cool. I'll be able to use that to my advantage to upgrade Rainbow Bright and take you guys and gals out online, of course, whenever you want to play He-Man or G.I. Joe against Rainbow Bright. Nearing the end of this, guys and gals. Look how many enemies are on the screen at once now. I need to get Pegasus into the four right here. Let's really go out loud here. Let me get up a little bit higher so I don't crash as easily. Oh, Gray's getting insane here. Oh, look at him tank based characters. Go for broke. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> See if I have anything else I can level up here. Nope, that's fully level for now. But again, I can only get to level 2 on some of these upgrades. I'll be able to get to level 3 as I uh, experience uh, gain in the characters. Okay, so far so good. I leveled up twice in this stage. Very, very cool. I beat the stage, let's see what kind of upgrades I get here. And no one will do He-Man for a moment to pick up the last of the kills. Yes, we get to play as a dragon. So my Comet Lobber can do level 2 now, that's good. Be easier to beat your G.I. Joe and Master Z universe and such. 
Uh, level two for my moonbeam. And uh, level three for my moonbeam. Even better. And I got another level up here. Uh, level three for my bubble gun. And duplicate item, they just give you tokens you can use to buy stuff. Oh, uh, there we go. Moonbeam again. Damn. Okay, we're going to change it to the He-Man army. Right here. And we're going to do the uh, Dungeons and Dragons style stage. And uh, get the rest of the kills. Very, very cool because you actually get to play as dragons from the get-go in this stage. You can see a huge contrast between the last stage that I just showed you. But again, I'm loving the variety of uh, stages. You have like a World War style stages, sci-fi inspired ones, Dungeons and Dragons inspired ones, and of course the Rainbow Bright Care Bears, My Little Pony style ones. But again, I'm going to take you guys and gals online with Rainbow Bright and just uh, get make him a field day out of it. And there's definitely a huge contrast in this level versus the Bubble Brook level. This is more like a Dungeons and Dragons influenced affair. Let's see if we can actually unlock He-Man by the end of the stage. We're up in the air with a nice Phoenix already from the get-go here. I'm going to try to get to that uh, combo meter with He-Man sometime in this level. Very, very cool. Digging this. Like a Battlefront on a smaller scale, without a doubt. And there are some enemy towers that I'm going to try to take out. See if I can take them out before I lose my Phoenix there. There's one right there. Okay. <laughs> we'll go around for one more circle here. I got 15 more seconds. Hopefully I can at least take one of them. Oh, look, the Castle Grayskull right there. How cool is that? Go down! Come on now, we can do this. And there is definitely a huge contrast between this and Bubble Brook. This is more of a Dungeons and Dragons style fair. Very, very cool stuff here. You're in a Phoenix right from the get-go. Feels like I'm playing Battlefront on a smaller scale. I'm going to hopefully, before the end of this video, uh, be able to unlock He-Man and take him on the battlefield. See if he actually does say, uh, by the power of Grayskull. I can't remember if he did or not. That meter's going up a little bit. Just need a couple more waves and we should be able to have it fully unlocked as far as He-Man on the battlefield. Battle Kid I might not be able to do this time, but I'll try it in the near future. Oh yeah. Oh, we're so close to getting He-Man already. But I gotta build a few towers here to defend my Castle Grayskull. Uh, we'll do uh, a laser there, and we'll build some grenade launchers over here. Why not? And I'll be able to get my Phoenix again in uh, about two minutes or so. We'll do some... Uh, Artillery here. Ground artillery for the more powerful tank-based enemies. And of course, I can level up everything just like I did before. We'll build another uh, grenade-type weapon there. Yes, I need to get that combo meter in the row to be able to do He-Man. So I'm going to try that one more time when I get a wave of more enemies here. Got to do it all in quick succession there. There's quite a few enemies there. Hopefully I can do it with that. Let's see if we can pull this off here. I'll try to take uh, charge of this and be able to do it. <clears throat> There's definitely a huge contrast between this and, of course, the Bubble Creek. This is more of a Dungeons and Dragons style affair here. And you even start out as a fiery phoenix right from the get-go. Very, very cool stuff here. Now I'm hoping I can unlock a He-Man throughout the course of the stage. 
See if I can pull this off. Build up that meter. Come on, He-Man, we need ya. And you can see the power of Castle Grayskull when I fly over it again. Right down there. That's what I'm trying to protect. Instead of a lunchbox this time, Castle Grayskull. And there's definitely a tremendous contrast between this and Bubble Creek. This is more of a Dungeons and Dragons style affair. Complete with a uh, Phoenix and all that cool stuff in the D&D die. And I'm trying to protect Castle Grayskull rather than the lunchbox. This truly feels like Battlefront on the smaller scale. It is incredibly cool. And I'm really hoping I could uh, get a combo meter enough to be able to unlock He-Man for the battlefield. Come on now, little dog fight's going on here. He-Man meters building up a little bit. So close, don't want to lose my Phoenix yet. Got a little more time left. Battery to give me more time, how cool is that? Getting closer to He-Man here. Come on, He-Man, we can do this. I got another minute left to do this. Should definitely be able to have He-Man on the battlefield before the end of the day. Forty-six seconds left to pull this little goal off. Come on, He-Man. He-Man available. I'm gonna save that. And yes, if I keep going, I could use Battle Cat. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to unlock Battle Cat. I'm just gonna throw the Phoenix down and build some towers here, and then I'm gonna throw He-Man into the mix. Did a few good towers here to broaden my defenses. And when I have a good wave of enemies, there we go, we got 40 enemies. I'm going to take out uh, He-Man right now. Let's check this out. <laughs> that is awesome. I do have grenades with He-Man. I don't remember if he had grenades in the original cartoon. I have my sword though. Can do some melee combat here. That is cool. Kinda like when you have the Star Wars characters in Battlefront as well. Dare I take He-Man up there? No, he'd probably be taken out by that. He's even playing like a take on the original theme music. That is very, very cool. Very, very... No, I'm just going to go up there and start grenading them towers because I have no more enemies to take on with He-Man right now. I'm going to go right into the foray and let He-Man be taken out. Wow, <laughs> that is crazy. See if I can take one of these towers down with a sword. Probably not. Oh, there we go. We got some enemies there. <laughs> this is very funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Oh, He-Man helped me get my 800 kills. Hope you guys and gals enjoyed the video. There'll be many more to come.